Hello everybody, welcome to this mining video for new players and also a look at mining crystals in EVE Online with the new mining changes. Mining has been conducted in EVE for almost two decades. So enjoy the video, I'll see you in a mo. Hello everybody, welcome back to this next video. Okay, so previously I made a new player mining video. Uh, it was a little bit of uh, time ago, uh, before all the new changes. So what we're going to do uh, today, we're going to update that video. Um, we're going to do a little bit of talking about the ships and the fittings and so on and so forth. And then we'll go out a little bit later and do some practical stuff. So treat this as like a little bit of a theory training session. From what I know, uh, some things might be a little bit wrong here. Uh, hopefully not. Um, but if I do get anything wrong, then please do correct me. Okay, so uh, we're going to start right back at the beginning, okay? Um, purely for the simple fact is, is that with this being a new video, uh, obviously with the changes, uh, we'll, we'll take this on the fact that uh, initially on this first part of the video, people don't know anything about the venture and the mining and, and all that good business. So, what we're going to do, um, on the previous videos, it would be worth just having a little look back and just seeing how to get into mining because there's a, a an experience where you can do the career agents and you can get all this stuff for free. So, if you're strapped for risk and you don't really want have the ISK to build... You can always go and do the career agent, get a free ship. And I always recommend that because it gives you a bit of a feel. Um, and, and, and we'll go from there. So this is the venture. I'm not sure if you if you don't not seen the venture before, this is the venture. It looks a little bit different because I have the radioactive skin on it because I liked it. So there's three different models of venture, so to speak. They're not quite a venture, but they're different. So obviously you have the venture. Then you have the, I think this is the Pro Endurance, this one. So they these all look the same because of the skin. Uh, so this is the Endurance. So this is uh, an upgraded version of the Venture. Uh, and this will do different things. So it has different bonuses and so on and so forth. And you can all, all, all also fit a cloak uh, and you can go into more dangerous space. Uh, hopefully this one is a prospect, but it could be an endurance note. But the other one is a prospect, and that has uh, also different types of bonuses. Okay, so those are the three tiers of ships of mining frigates. But today we're just going to focus on the venture. Now, from a fitting perspective of the venture, uh, this is the way I would recommend a player use a venture starting off. Um, is a little bit expensive so um, what you're going to have to do maybe is just get the tech 1 variations of these modules until you can afford to upgrade into a tech 2 variant but this is an end line advent uh, an end line venture for an alpha character is where you will probably say this is where you're going to be uh, I'm pretty sure all of these modules are runnable by alpha just let me double check Yes, 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 yes. Okay, right. So this can be fitted by an alpha. So you can go and do your, your mining as an alpha. So you don't need to worry about Omega at this point. The video is going to be split in two sections. So the first section is related to an alpha character getting on board, trying the game for the first time. The second section, we're going to dive in a little bit more and we're going to look at the mining crystals and things like that, which are for Omega only, unfortunately, at this time. But it's good to get a whole picture of how it all works. So this is the venture fit. I'll copy this into the clipboard and I will put this into the description below uh, so you can copy and paste the fit. I'm also looking at skill plans. Now, I, I don't really have a massive amount of uh, experience with the skill plans, so uh, I'll le le leave that with me. I'll put that together uh, and see if you can copy and paste that link from the description into EVE so you have your full skill plan. All right, so just moving down. So we've got the minor twos. OK, uh, you can uh, fit the variant of, obviously, Tech 1 variations and Storyline and Faction. If you use a Faction 1, you can use Mining Crystals in a Faction 
uh, mining laser, as far as I'm aware. I'm not too sure if you can as an alpha. That's something that we can look at, but it might cost a little bit of risk to do that. But that's not the goal of today. That may be for another video. So with the Miner 2, uh, which is what you're going to be looking at, we have this new thing called Residue. Okay, so for every cycle of of your mining laser, there's a probability that you will get some waste. Okay, so for a Miner 2, uh, your Residue probability is 34% per cycle. And as far as I'm aware, it does stack. Okay, Um so what I do, uh, it, so it's not always a good idea to AFK mine, by the way. You're going to get ganked. You can do it, but the chances are you're going to get ganked. Are you going to get ganked in a venture? Probably not, but, you know, here we go. Uh, so that's that. Okay, now things that will that you, you can change here as a player and improve. So your mining amount is at 60 meters cubed, which is improved by a mining laser upgrade. And you get a 9% mining bonus with a slight CPU penalty um, but for the for each module. But that's how you get more uh, mining volume, if you like. An explanation on a couple of other things. So drones, pretty much self-explanatory. Fit your drones to how you want. If you're in high sec, you, don't, you only really need light drones. You can only, I think you can fit two light drones or one medium drone in a venture. But they become less relevant as we dive into deeper space. Okay, now you can take a venture into Pochfin and Nullsec and make a little bit of money. So we're go I'm going to leave that with you for now uh, because that's for a little bit later on. Okay, so you don't, you are not restricted to high sec. Okay, you can ninja mine in high sec, uh, in Nullsec and Pochfin. Okay, and I have done it takes a little bit of time and there's a little bit of downtime filamenting here and there but you can do it small shield booster uh, that's for obviously your passive uh, for your active regen so that you're going to take a little bit of a hit off the npcs so that you can just put that put that away uh the the npcs don't do any much damage in high sex so you don't need to worry about that as long as you switched on it doesn't really matter micro warp drive when you warp into an asteroid site you you warp in at around 20 to 30 kilometers unless you have a bookmark set which we'll show you later uh, this micro warp drive will do two and a half 2.5 k meters per second so you'll get to your rocks nice and quick uh, because the venture doesn't have very good range it has 12 kilometers and it has an awful lot range but the reason why we fit these units here uh, which is the first one is a scan resolution bonus so we can lock things quicker so if you don't know what scan resolution is basically scan resolution is if you look down here larger value of a scan resolution it increases your locking speed so the smaller your scan resolution the faster you're gonna lock things okay again for another video if you don't understand I can make a video if you it's not really relevant for mining, but it's relevant from a bigger perspective. Uh, the ionic field projector, again, you can go for a tech one variation. Uh, this gives you a maximum target range bonus because it has an awful lock range on the venture. So this gives you an extra few kilometers. You can fit tank rigs in here, which we will change when we go into the d d more dangerous parts of space. But for high sec, we don't really need to. There's no point, so we may as well use the utility to get other things. We then have the small signal focusing kit, which basically gives us a scan speed bonus to our survey scanner. If I've got that the right way, right way around, yes. So the survey scanner, uh, which I did skip over, is this saves you a lot of time. Okay, so... If you are doing a lot of mining, uh, it might not make much difference in a venture, but it will make different mo a lot of difference as your core foundations go on through the game. So when you go into mining barges, exhumers, things like that, you're going to chew through the rocks quite quickly and you need to know how much is in there. Now, more advanced ways, what you can do is you take that uh, meters cubed, what's remaining, which is what this unit does and you can make a calculation in your head that you only need three quarters of a, of a cycle time to remove that rock now if you do a full cycle time you're basically over mining so it's basically over damaging the rock so you basically for a quarter of a cycle 
you're going to waste that time when you could be mining another rock. So that's the idea of a survey scanner. So this, while it only seems, well, you may say, well, it's only a quarter of a cycle, but if you take a quarter of a cycle of what's a cycle, so 60 seconds. So if you take, if you save 15 seconds per cycle, if you times that over a year, that's a lot of time. So it actually just fitting this module will save you so much time in the long run, not necessarily visually in the short term, but in the long run, you will get a massive boost from that. Okay, so that's that. I'm going to skip on now to the more advanced areas now. Uh, that's just a brief overview for new players. If you just skip the next section and just go to the practical section and then you can see what sort of principles we use in space. Okay, so for the new changes, right. So bear with me on this because I have not really got a massive amount of experience with it, but I've given myself a crash course on how this all works. So we've gone through the residue already, right? So the best way to work this out is uh, what we're going to do, we're going to do everything in simulate view. Okay, for now, before we go out in space and waste time, because there's absolutely no point in doing that. So firstly, what CCP have done, um, they have categorized asteroids. Okay, now understanding this will help you know which uh, laser crystal to pick. Uh, where are we going with this now? Uh, so manufacturing, oh help me out, I can't see, uh, manufacturing, so we're going to go materials and then we're going to have a look at raw materials. Okay, now in the patch notes and in the crystal section, you've got crystals for simple ores, complex ores, abyssal ores and mercoxic I think. Let's just have a quick look. So mining crystals, asteroid, we're not going to cover moon at the moment. So we've got, in or, not in order, abyssal, coherent, complex, simple, mercoxic, okay, uh, and variegated. Not sure what that means. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah, that's Ness. Okay. So we've got different um, categories of asteroid. Right. Now, it doesn't tell you what those are in this section down here. So I'm just going to give you a brief outline, okay? Uh, I'm not going to text like put text on the video so you may need to skip back to this i'll put a timestamp in so simple ores so for the simple ore crystal it is going to be uh standard ores uh for simple ores we've got veldspar we have scordite we have pyroxes and plagioglase so basically anything that you can find in high sec Coherent ores are umber, kernite, jaspet, amorphite, and hedbegite. Okay, so they're the coherent ores, which, are, as far as I know, are found in low sec. Then we've got the variegated ores, which is gnes, ocha. Or dark, I don't know if it's dark archer. I think it's dark archer, isn't it? Dark archer and crokite. Then for the complex ores, we've got bistot, arcanor, and spodumene, which are found in wormholes and null sec. Abyssal ores, then. So then we obviously go on to the abyssal ore crystals, which is tassinolite, recuvene, and uh standard ores let's do this finish this off so tassinolite racavine and bed besnadestine okay and then the final one we've got mccoxic which is fine in found in null sec so initially what you're going to do is if you have your head switch on with switched on with your mining and what you want to do with the mining and you've looked at all your tables of what you want meters cubed per isk amount, you'll make a decision on what you're going to do and what you need. So, for example, if I'm building something and I want some feldspar, then all I need is my simple ore crystal. I don't need my complex crystals. Okay. So that. What you do with those, then obviously we're just going to pull this out. 
Some of this people will know, okay? So bear with me, okay? So what we're going to do here and have a look at ship equipment. I uh, feel like I've done something wrong here. There we have. Let me get rid of that. And we need to look at harvest equipment. Mining lasers. Modulated deep core miner 2. And we want two of those. And they do fit with this fit. See? You can fit a cloak on here. Get velocity issues. Bone negatives. And all sorts. And you can't warp anyway. So there's no point. This whole fit is like 13 million in a wormhole. You could probably make this back in a very short space of time. So. Uh, with the modulated deep core miners. So before exit simulation so i want you to just put in your mind we've got here uh for i don't work on the 255 meters cube per 60 seconds i work on the cycle time but i work on the 4.3 meters cube per second per second if you see that there just here just above there that's what i work on that is your isk per hour in inverted commas um of mining okay so 4.3 is our target of what we want to improve now we know now after having a look at the uh, tables just now uh, and go back and have a look at what the ores do um basically a, a, a modulated deep core miner is no good on its own it, it's no good on its own so it has double the cycle time but it has double the output but well, it, it looks like it has double it. No, it has triple a cycle time. It has triple a cycle time, double the output per cycle, but it doesn't have the two the meters cube as a minor two does. Okay. Um the reason being is is that you need to load crystals in these um to get that up. Alright. Now you can run these with no crystals, so if your crystals burn out, it's not the end of the world. Um but it's just not efficient. It, it, so there's no point, basically. You may as well dock up or go home or pod yourself. So mining crystals. So we go into the mining crystal section and we're just going to have a look at the meters cubed of each crystal. So we're going to focus at the moment just on uh, the simple asteroid mining because I think a lot of players that are going to be coming here are newer players that aren't really venturing out there in the in deep space right now. So we're just going to have a look. So the first crystal we're going to come across is type A. And there's three types, type A, type B, and type C. Type A, and then we've got the Tech 2 variants. Let's just have a look at the Tech 2 variants. I'm not, my skills aren't great right now because i pulled all my mining skills out so uh, for pvp so we're going to use type a so having a look at type a so type a crystals are used for modulated mining equipment and provide steady yields with low residues and high reliability so basically what that means is is if you go into here and have a look at uh, the base stats so you get a 1.8 times yield modifier which is a little bit volatile um, which is volatile volatility damage of the crystal basically uh, is how much damage the crystal is going to take uh, and then obviously your residue volume multiplier bonus so if you have a look at the uh, the laser the laser has a residue well this is stacked so the base value for residue probability is 34 percent it's then multiplied with the crystal that's used okay so if you take the crystal out your base value of residue will be 34 percent okay uh, and then we've got obviously all the other stuff about the mining amount and things like that okay so but we're just going to focus on the crystal so simple mining crystal type let's go back there all right so now we can see that so when you've just showed you that graph we that little table thing we can now see the residue probability bonus is three is a plus 3.6 percent so that means you take your base value you add 3.6 percent to it you get a total and that's the total residue probability per cycle okay 
seems really complex, but actually, when I first looked at this, I was like, wow, this is this is going to blow my mind. It's not that, it's not difficult to work out. The actual probabilities and numbers and how much you're going to get for what cycle over a long period of time, there's some spreadsheets that we can do for that if we need to, okay? Um, so, yeah, that's pretty much what we can do with that. So, where were we? So, type crystal A. Okay, so then the next phase is, so we know what our residue probability bonus is, we know what our base value is, we now know what we can mine. So we're going to hover over, and the most important figure that we're interested in today is the meters cubed per second. So as you can see there, just taking that jump to the Tech 2 mining crystal, with these skills on this character, it's 5.1 meters cubed per second, which is an improvement on the minor 2s, not a massive improvement but a slight improvement which would make the difference and with stacking skills this would be more uh, i can't show you what how much more right now because the skills are injected but over time we'll have a look at that again this is just a basic understanding but it's good for a new player because they can see on lower end skills for mining what they're going to get what bang for buck okay so that's that. So uh, all in all, together with both crystals, we're going to be getting 10.2 meters cubed per second. Refer to your charts. Uh, there's loads of charts on there, and you can see how much per meters cubed a, a piece of ore is. Uh, combine that with compression, moving things about, and then obviously you'll get a final value, but that's when it gets more complicated. So mining crystal type B. Uh, mining crystal type Bs are used with modulated mining equipment, as we have seen before. They achieve faster yields. However, we get high residue with low reliability, which basically means that the... Uh, it does tell you here, actually, what they're for. So, Plaggy Lay's got a score on Mel's bar. So, it does tell you. I didn't think it did tell you, but it does tell you what they're for. Um, so, what to take from this? It basically has a faster yield, uh, mines more, uh, but it has a low reliability, meaning the crystal can burn out. And also, we've got a higher probability of getting uh, residue. All right, so we say, what is that residue? Let's have a look. Is it worth it? Yes, it probably is. But only if you do the things that I've said before about cycles. Okay, so, but if you look at this, asteroid specialization yield modifier at 1.8. Okay, capacity bonus is 20%. However, we have a residue probability bonus of 30% now. So our bonus, our, basically our base value is 34%. Our residue probability is now an additional 30%, giving us 64% residue probability. That's a lot of probability per cycle. However, we lose 20% I would say cycle time. Okay, so we'll go into the laser and have a look at that as a whole. Uh, no, we won't because I've not dragged it in. That one and that one. Okay, we'll go back to the laser as a base. Okay, so a lot of things have changed here. So our activation cost has gone up. So actually now if you look, if we have our... Let's turn our MWD off. If you look now, we don't need that. It's still cap stable. Okay, so that doesn't actually make any difference for this purpose. It is if we've got everything running, but we're not going to do that. Okay, so the capacity is uh, it's a small charge. The volume is 5 meters cubed. We can fit 10. No, we can't. That's the laser. Ignore that. So anyway, um, the optimal range. So activation time. So we were 180 percent, 180 seconds base value originally. The mining crystal has brought it down to just over 2 minutes. So per cycle, we're going to be getting more. Uh, again, we're going to be getting about meters cubed per cycle, a thousand meters cubed per cycle with these skills. Increase your skills, you'll get more. Uh, and that will basically, our cargo hold now on the venture is, let me see, open cargo hold. Cargo hold. I'm in simulation, so I might not be able to. Oh. One moment, please. Open cargo hold. Okay, so our mining hold is 5,000 meters cubed. So 5,000 meters cubed is going to be 1,000 meters cubed per cycle. So we're going to fill this car cargo hold up in two and a half cycles because 
it's a thousand meters cubed per gun okay per turret so we're going to fill this up really quickly but we've got a high residue probability so we're probably going to miss out on residue so there's a risk involved okay so we get higher volumes 6.4 meters cubed per second it's higher volume more risk personally depends on what you're doing i would take the type a less risk less less uh, residue possible probability the more cycles you do the more risk okay um i always cycle my turrets so uh it, yeah that's the way i just work all right so that's that uh then finally we've got type c type c is your pvp type of uh, mining crystal so type c what that's for is basically it has uh high residues and very low reliability and it basically is for asteroid clearing okay so if you pop these in it actually gives you 0.6 meters cubed per second now you ask yourself why would i want this why would i want type c crystals i get nothing from it think about the theory so you jump into null second want to upset someone you go to their moon uh, there's no one there and you go and clear out their moon for them and get nothing from it imagine the upset yeah because they've just spent 14 days blasting a moon pulling a moon in they forgot they've exploded it and forgot to mine it and you go out and clear the belt yeah so it does have its uses uh it's a different type of gameplay a different kind of style i've never done it i haven't seen it done yet uh, but a fleet of ventures carrying a load of type c crystals going clearing everywhere out there's eventually somebody's going to get really upset okay so that's the idea of this doesn't really make much difference in high sec um going clearing out asteroid belts it's just a nuisance and i'm not even sure you can use it in high sec so that's not for me all right so that's pretty much it uh, that's got the, the basics covered um, for fitting. So let's undock, let's go to the next system and we'll go and have a little look and we'll have a look at how the strategy is. So if you have skipped the section about um, the Tech 2, uh, sorry, the new mining lasers, uh, welcome back. Uh, so we're just going to go to, uh, where should we go? We'll go there. So, uh, I hope everyone's doing well. Please uh, always remember that you should uh, really, if you're new to this, do the career agents, the mining career agents. You get free stuff, and it's always really worth doing, to be honest, um, because you get a core understanding for the game. There is a new uh, MPE, new player experience, I think, for mining now, um, but I haven't seen that yet. All right, still love this jump animation. I remember when the jump animate this new jump animation first came out. All right, so uh, we've never mined before, or we'll pretend that we've never mined before. Where do we go? Okay, so if we right-click in space and hover over asteroid belts, we have a full set of asteroid belts. Now we're going to choose eeny meeny miny mo that one. Let's go for the one that's not in the middle but close to the middle, and we're going to warp at zero. Now something important here uh, which is going to save you time you need to find a home system okay so back in the day 10 years ago 11 years ago uh, i was with some friends and we said we needed to find uh, a better high sec base uh, that's close to jita uh, fairly low security so we get decent missions um, not low security as in below 0.5 um, so we you know we had we found a 0.7 system which had a 0.5 next door and uh, point sixes and point sevens all around. Uh, if you if you know Eve well, you'll know where that is. And I've never left a system. It's always been my base, okay, uh, for my whole life of Eve. Uh, I've lived in Fcon space up in Branch, so that was my null sec base uh, at the time. Um, but high sec, everything that I started with and still have the original containers for is in one system. All right, so anyway, uh, if you have a mining overview set, so we'll go that, we'll do this drone one here, sort by distance, so you'll notice when you come in, uh, you'll be well away from anywhere. 
uh, you won't warp in on zero at any of the asteroids. Uh, so you can, if you, the MWD is there, so that you can get there faster. Uh, but here's the tip. So let's say, for example, uh, we have different types of aft asteroids. Okay. So uh, for let's just do this. Uh, so the highest yield of Veldspar, for example, is dense. Uh, that has the highest yield of um, basically of the Tritanium that's inside. Okay, so what you need to think about is I need to mine the densest asteroid that I can and move on to the next belt. You can mine the smaller ones if you want, uh, and you do that when there's nothing else available. But the best way to do this is get think about uh, so dense, so dense Veldspar, so it's got the most in it. Massive Scordite got the most in it. Viscous Pyroxes got the most in it. So pick out the pick out the big words, okay. So dense Veldspar. So what we're going to do here is if we have found our home system, we know where we're going to live. We're going to right click this asteroid, save the location, uh, not go into wormholes. Let's go into ore and we're going to type in dense Veldspar. Now at downtime, these asteroids generally um, spawn in a similar place okay so locations or dense Veldspar we can do that and we can set bookmarks up all over the system so that we can bounce to each asteroid um, and if it's not there we go on to the next one and so on so we can have a bookmark for every single asteroid belt that's the fastest way to do it okay there's no faster way other than that uh, it remember when you do this every single second counts okay so people talk about, um, excuse me, I still have a bit of a cold. Um, people talk about how industry, you can't make any money. Okay, that is complete rubbish. Okay, so people say, oh, I mined uh, a million units of Veldspar and I got all this Tritanium and I built some ships and I made a loss. It, it, it doesn't, it, if you've got all your skills and everything in place and the right uh, industry set up, you, you don't make a loss, okay? Uh, doing things initially, you will make a loss, but it's an investment of time to learn the game, okay? You're not gonna make, you're not gonna be a millionaire straight away. It's the same as, it's the same as real life. You've gotta be patient and you've gotta pick your time. So first of all, uh, I'll talk about that when we're mining. So hit the survey scanner and it'll give you 23 kilometer radius. Boom, there we go. So we're looking at dense Veldspar and look here. It tells us how much we have and what the meters cubed is. Now, we know that our cargo hold has 5,000 meters cubed in it. We only need 5,000. So we can go to this asteroid here, which we're actually locked onto. We can lock it from the survey scan results and start the lasers. That's it. Job done. And we basically do that until we get 5,000 meters cubed, which is about two and a half cycles. So we can fill this up really quickly. Uh, no, it's not in this, is it? Uh, it's 500 per cycle, so it's 10 cycles. So 10 minutes, and then we're full. So we're talking about um, making money uh, with industry. There's actually a really good video come out by CCP, um, which um, shows you manufacturing and invention. Uh, I really recommend that you check it out because their team is coming up with some really good videos and good information, and they have the Solar Source document, so... Um, that's that's where we should be taking the information from as well. So making money in Eve. So basically, um, you have to be patient, okay? And doing things like building, for example, if you if you look at the market, okay, we hopefully should be able to get into the GMR GTA market here. So let's go to ships. I'm I, I'm not worried about getting ganged, by the way because it's just it's only a venture but you guys need to keep an eye out oh yeah just before we talk about the market um there is a, a video uh let's do this so we don't get that's rubbish not keen on this kind of uh let's do that uh okay so um what you need to do is there's a guide that I've got. You need to set all like code and all the known gankers to red. Uh, keep your local overview open uh, like this. And anything red in the system, uh, you can keep an eye on. 
You can then uh, go into D scan and keep hitting D scan on a long range. Uh, I have ship set, and then I can see everything what's in here. Um, anything like a group of thrashers who want to come and kill a venture and lose this, that's fine. Not my bag, but crack on. Uh, but that's that's what you do for that. And we're going to use that more when we go into more dangerous space in a later video. So markets, okay. So initially, uh, I would take advantage of the fact that um, in here, um, you get free blueprints, okay. Always accept these blueprints because they're free blueprints and you don't have to worry about copying them, buying originals or anything. The, the, everything is here for you. So you can build, build two ruptures and the, look at the uh, material and time efficiency. Build two ruptures and make a bit of isk. I don't know how much you're going to make. So here's the materials required. If you train up your skills, you'll get better um, industry skills. You'll get better efficiencies on this so if you i have pretty good manufacturing skills so i will get some multipliers here so you know this tells you what you need you can actually get these pretty quickly um <coughs> noxium and zydrine is going to be your pain uh, you can just buy uh see the noxium's the most expensive so i think you can go and get that from um abyssal space um, isogen's a bit of a chunk to get, but everything else is is fairly easy. You may as well just buy Megaside. Don't even bother going and getting it. It's not worth anything. Um, and then you build this ship, and the ship's worth ten million. So if you look here, all right, okay, total estimated price ten point five million. Uh, if you bought all the materials, but you're not going to do that. You're not going to buy all the materials, are you? You've got the materials already to use some of them. So. It's not going to cost you 10.5 million. All right, if you went and bought everything and built it, it's you're going to lose money. But of course you're going to lose money because you've just gone and bought everything from an over from a saturated market. So you're going to lose money. So that as well, um, when you go to, uh, you've just got to be a bit more uh, sensible on what on what you do. So you can look at the market here. So even that said 9.5 million estimated price. They're selling them for seven million, but that could be the fact that they've just done a they've done a blueprint giveaway on the rewards section, so they need to get rid of ruptures, you know. So there's there's big impacts, you know. So like here, look, we have a look. So look at the market. So we can open this out even more. What you don't want to do uh, is, you know, I'm not a financial advisor or anything, so don't take this into the real world. What you don't want to do is be selling items when the graph is down here. That that's a no go. So, but this is the opportunity to start buying things. So, if things are down, we're going into trade here and not mining. But even still, you you're still going to mine and buy and build things. But mine and build them and hold on to them. Sit on to them. Invest in those items. Keep them in your hangar. If you've got the isk, sell off what you need. Just keep you going. But hold on to the rest. And then when the market spikes, even set three-month orders up here, look. I'd be quite happy buying 50 ruptures. And then, I'd be, well, at this price, 7 million. I'd buy 50 ruptures here and then sell a three-month order in at about 11, mil about 11 million. 4 million isk per, per rupture if they all sell. You've just made 200 million esque for just buying low. Nothing. It's nothing. But if you if you do that over a longer period on bigger volumes as you grow, uh, that's that's it. That that's how it is. That's how you make your money. So you know th that's quite that's a lot of a heavier uh, subject. You know we're just covering mining off right now. Um, but yeah, I've talked to you for 40 minutes about. My I'm trying to give you a brief overview of industry. I think there's some. Um, <coughs> I don't really want to get myself into any mither here, but you know, uh, there's some comments out there um, that you know, sort of say this that's not worth it. This whatever. Um, but having said that, it's what you invest and what time you put into things. Okay, the more time and the more investment that you put into something done correctly you will get more out of it without a shadow of a doubt it's just it's impossible not to those ruptures now here we go so uh where are they rupture okay i'm gonna do this now 
So rupture. Uh, what have we got? Uh, I'm gonna buy those. I'm gonna buy those. And somebody's already got those. There we go. So what have we got there? Bought those. Not really gonna touch those. Um, but there we go. Uh, in three months' time, I've probably made. Uh, I don't know how much will I've made. How did I buy four? And I'm probably gonna make two million on each. Yeah, I just made just short of ten million uh, less tax in three months' time. Sat there. I'll leave him in Jita. I'll leave him in Jita for three months, and we'll do a video. Okay, so that's how simple it is. If you've got the liquid, it even if you just do one ship at a time. So regularly troll down the markets and look at trends. You know, um, granted you have to have the available isk, but you turn a, a small game into a different, a bigger game. Yeah, you know, it's, it's it's effectively you might be, you know, it's it's not gambling as such, but you are gambling on the market. But like here, look, Corax, I wouldn't buy here. There's no way. It's on an uptrend. Why would you do that? Come on. Mm, still in an upward trend. Algos. Catalyst is generally always stable because of gankers. Thrashers generally always stable. But you know you need to look at your ships that aren't uh, generally aren't really all that used all that much. Here we go. Here's a low incursus. They're a bit low. So let's have a look at the market data on incursus. Pretty stable. There's no gaps there. You got to look at big gaps and big swings. So yeah, so there is money to be made. But you can take these principles of mining this ore into that and open it out even more. All right. So that's pretty much it. Um, I pro I haven't been taking much notice of uh, residue. Uh, didn't really get all that much. But we've been having a chat and we've made half a million. Okay, uh, and we probably could have made more if we uh, just concentrated a little bit, but there you go. Uh, I like to chat to you guys. So I do have another skin giveaway coming up. Uh, I have my uh, Enforcer video coming out. Uh, hopefully, I'm going to finish the recording for that tonight, uh, and we'll get this video out today uh, because it's been heavily requested. Uh, so we'll get this out today, uh, hopefully by uh, weekend. Uh, don't quote me on that. Uh, it should be by weekend. We'll have the Enforce, Enforcer video out. Uh, three or four kills with that now. Um, so it's got some nice kill marks on it. Uh, so we'll get that out. Uh, with the Enfor that Enforcer video, I'll run the YouTube giveaway uh, for the partner skin. And again, uh, I thank everybody uh, for supporting the channel over the time. Uh, just try and be sensible about, you know, how you portray the current issues in EVE Online. Um, I have my opinions on it. Uh, I don't wish to publicly. I've had a chat with people, so a number of people whose names I won't mention, uh, because I don't think it's fair. Um, I have my opinions on the pack. Um, my opinions do differ uh, to other people's, which is fine. I have the balls to admit it. Um, and you know, just take your own thoughts of how it affects you as a player. And also think about the long-term consequences of what actions you take has an effect on the video game as a whole. Um, personally, I don't condone... Uh, sorry, I don't agree with s certain actions that people have taken. However, it's a free world. You can do what you want. Uh, but the only thing I ask as a creator uh, and I ask as a friend to the the eve community is just think about how much damage y it could create okay and we don't want damage in a video game that we all love we don't want to purposely damage and outweigh the 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 pack may damage current players views on the game and i understand that i really do i don't disagree with some of the things I'm not going to sit here and, you know, um, break that down into tiny little pieces because I have my opinion. I personally don't mind the pack. I think it's a good marketing strategy to keep a game going that we all love. Um, money inflow into a game 
means that we have be- we can employ more people. It means that we can develop the technology that the servers are run on to improve the tie dye. It means that we can improve staffing levels. It means that we can improve content that come into the game. Without money, none of this is possible. While it appears free to play, nothing in this world is free. Understand that, okay? I'll leave the final thought with you. For the protest that people are doing, imagine this. A real Eve shutdown. Meaning no Eve anymore. The game is gone. I'm not saying that's ever going to happen. It's not. Of course, it's not a ridiculous comment. But think about it for a moment. No more Eve. Now, I personally, after all of the time and effort that I've put into a video game that I still enjoy, that would hurt more than probably the, what this pack is going to do. All right? So just think about it, okay? Think about your own views. Think about how much you love a game. And if you don't love the game, go and play something else. Go and have a break from the game. I ain't going to sit here and let you like other people. It's your choice. I enjoy the game and I love the game. I love this game. And I don't want to see damage to the game done. Not that people do it with vicious intent or anything like that. But that this is my opinion. This is where I stand. I don't follow the protest. I want to play video games. And I want to play EVE Online. And I want to create content for EVE Online. And I don't want to see damage to a game that I enjoy. That is a personal opinion. It's a valid opinion. It's not a come and attack me opinion. It's an opinion that I stand by and I have done since day one. All right? Cool. Right. Mining. This is the mining video for new bros. New bros, don't take any notice of any negativity in the game. It's a great game. Make your own opinions and enjoy it. All right? Anybody wants to hit me up for a chat about what I've discussed, let's not do it publicly. Come and hit me on Discord. Let's have a chat about it. I'll give you my views. You can give me your views. Let's do this. I'll stand by it. You know, I don't have any issues with anybody. I love everybody. You know, I hug everybody if I could. And I don't have any malicious intent towards anybody. I'll talk to anyone. All right. Much love. See you soon. Next video, Enforcer video. Love you all. See you later.